Okay, good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to um, our Medical Projects webinar this evening. Um, my name is Mark Williams. Um, I work here at Medical Projects. Um, and thanks for, thanks for joining us this evening. Uh, it's been a while since we've done one of these webinars. Um, so it's great to, to, to be doing these again. Um, we started these like 18 months ago now, kind of during the whole COVID um, situation. Um, and it's great to have kind of been doing these webinars all the way through that. And now we're kind of coming through the other side of COVID, but they've been so popular that we're going to carry on doing them this year as well. And it's great to see um, we've got nearly a thousand students um, watching this tonight. So welcome to everybody. And um, we'll work out a little bit about who you are. And um, we've got a few poll questions to try and kind of work out um, who's, who's watching tonight. So we'll get into that in just a second. Um, but just to give you kind of a bit of the, the housekeeping and the kind of introduction side of things, um, this webinar, it will finish before eight o'clock tonight. Um, you know, we appreciate um, you giving up um, some of your time this evening. So we'll make sure that we're quite concise with the information. We'll give you lots of links to things so you can go away and kind of do some extra reading. So we don't have to cover everything, but we can give you as much information as we can in this next kind of 45, 50 minutes. We will have time for questions as well. Um, yes, we want to give you some information and give you some guidance, but we also we know that students at this kind of stage have a lot of questions and we'll have about 20 minutes at the end where we'll open up the, um, the Q&A um, and we'll, we'll use the upvote system on the Q&A. Uh, if you have used that before, great. If you haven't, essentially it just means that if somebody else has asked a question that you would also like an answer to, you can just hit the kind of vote button and it brings the most popular questions to the top so we know, um, or we can try and get through the, the most important questions or the most popular questions in the time because we'll get hundreds and hundreds of questions um, and we won't, we won't be able to get through all of them today, but we'll try and get through the, the most important or the most popular ones as well. And like I mentioned before, we will be using the polls as well. I've only got a couple of questions. It just helps us work out who, who's kind of watching this evening and how we can kind of tailor the content a little bit more to, to the stage you're at at school, maybe, or the stage of the application process you're at as well. Cool. So I'll put the first question up now and let's launch the first poll. It should come up on your screen. I'll just give every, everybody kind of five, 10 seconds just to, to answer that. Um, and essentially, this is just to ask whether it's your first time watching one of our webinars or whether you've watched lots of them in the past. Okay, so it looks like a lot of people. This is the first webinar that you've ever watched of Medical Projects, which is amazing. Um, huge welcome to you. Um, it's great to have you, you kind of with us this evening. And we're going to be running lots of these webinars over the next kind of um, year and years. So hopefully we can kind of support you all the way through that, that journey. And if you're back again, welcome. Um, you know what we do here, so it's good to have you back. And next question, I'll, I can share those results actually, just so you know who's watching as well actually, so it's not just uh, for us. So yeah, 87%, this is your, your, first, your first webinar. Uh, and the rest of you have attended one of our, one of our webinars before, which is cool. And next one is the last poll question. So it's kind of like what year are you in or what stage are you at at the moment? And again, this just helps us kind of tailor the, the content a little bit more. So we know when we're talking about things like work experience tonight, we know what stage you're at and we can kind of recommend things for the stage you're, you're currently at. So it looks like most people are in year 12. So obviously you just kind of started the whole year 12 equivalent. Um, so you'll obviously just started that busy time of year, lots of things to do with your medicine applications already. So you've taken a really good first step with the fact that you're here. So that's great. And I'll share those results as well. 22% year 11, 66 year 12, 3% year 13, and then other. So you could be kind of younger, older, could be teachers, parents as well. Okay, cool, right. We know who you are, so it's not just me tonight. Um, Minnie's joining us, and Minnie's going to be the person that's uh, talking to you. Hi, Minnie. Hello, how are you? Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. So you've done lots and lots of um, webinars with us in the past. Um, obviously, we've got a lot of kind of new people watching tonight as well, which is amazing. 
Um, so I don't know if you just want to give a super brief background to kind of the stage you're at um, for everybody that's not kind of met you before. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, it's so nice to see so many new faces, well, not see new faces, but have so many of you guys here. Yeah, so I'm Minnie. Um, I did uh, my preclinical years at uh, St Andrews and I'm currently in my final clinical year at Manchester. Uh, so I was on that route. Um, I've absolutely loved medical school, excited to be done with it though, and get um, just get practicing. But you guys have chosen a great sort of career path to aim for. Um, and it's exciting being at the start of this journey. So excited to sort of get you kickstarted here and give you some top tips for getting going with work experience. Yeah, so I think tonight we want to kind of talk about work experience. It's a really important part of the, the medical school application process, but it can also be one of the most challenging aspects to, to to kind of get to get work experience and get really good work experience or volunteering work um, so hopefully we can just kind of talk through a, th a few different options that the students have and also give some actual practical advice and information as well because i think a lot of people they'll say oh just go and get some work experience and that's so difficult to do. And it's like they expect you to know how to go, where to look for it and how to get it. Um, but hopefully we can kind of help with that little bit, the where to look and kind of how to ask for it and how to get it set up as well. So it's not just some theoretical information tonight. It should be here's some actual stuff you can use to get work experience. Yeah, fingers crossed. So sorry, try and move on the side. There we go. Um, so uh, what is work experience? Well, first we'll start with why work experience? Why do you need work experience? So it's really important to get a good insight into what the role of a doctor is. Uh, like what do they do day to day? What, what does the job entail? Like what do they do? You know, it's not all like Grey's Anatomy, you're not saving lives in theatre all the time. Um, you know, there's paperwork to do. There's, you know, management sides of it as teaching um so you want to have a proper um sort of thorough view of what a doctor actually does and both the positives and negatives as well you know it's not all singing and dancing all the time um medical schools want to know that you've seen you know the downsides of being a doctor um and that you've you know understood that there are downsides and you still you know you're still committed to you know, getting involved in this career and making it through medical school, which is a long, long process. And then it's an even longer process to get to being a consultant at the end of it, which is the big end game of, of doing medicine. Um, and so, yeah, medical schools want to know that you're committed as well. And, um, you know, they, they want to take on students that, you know, can deal with the course as well. It's a long and stressful course with a, with a high workload. Um, so, you know they don't want people dropping out they want to know that you know exactly what you're getting into um and work experience is so important for that like asking those questions what is it really like to be a doctor or if you see medical students what's it like being a medical student and even asking you know other healthcare professionals what their work is like as well it's really good understanding uh you know what the role of a nurse is as well what the role of physios are healthcare assistants just to know you have a big picture of what you know working in healthcare is like um Big message as well on this slide is it doesn't have to be shadowing like shadowing is absolutely great um, and it's a great thing to reflect on put in your personal statement but um you know for some people it's more difficult to get hold of um sort of position shadowing especially if you don't have friends or family uh, within healthcare and medicine so um just important thing to take away is that there are other options um, you don't have to worry if you're applying and you've not, you know, you know, sat in on a clinic and in a GP or, um, you know, been following around a doctor all day. There are there are other options. So, you know, working and volunteering in a caring role, which I'll talk through later. Um, and this can be so as Holyoke Medical School says on theirs, there's like loads of different places that you can do it. So, you know, it doesn't have to be in a hospital, it can be care homes, hospital, hospices, etc. So, you know, these all make up, um, you know, care of, you know, all the population. Um, you know, they all support the NHS in, you know, looking after patients. So it's not all always concentrated in the hospital. Um, um, so, you know, it's worth trying these places as well, if you don't, you know, uh, get lucky and getting a, you know, a shadowing spot in a hospital. So um, 
as I said, like not of, not everyone's going to have friends and family in healthcare, uh, but it is it is great if you do, and definitely ask them um, if you know they have any opportunities where they are. If you can shadow them, or if maybe they have colleagues that are willing to take you, um, that's a great place to start. But you know, it's not be all and end all. If you don't have the you know those contacts, then uh, there are other options. So um, your local hospital might offer a shadowing program. Um, which is specific to sixth form college students, people looking at applying to medicine. So um, just recommend going onto your local hostel website or trust website. Um, and I might have a specific sort of volunteering page. It might be under there. Um, and then if not, just dropping the volunteer service an email. Um, or if you know there's a speciality that you're interested in, maybe you could even just drop the consultant an email and, and they might be happy to take you asking your school as well it's always worth asking um, they must have had you know people applying to medicine before um, so see if they've got any contacts anyone that you know they know or any specific programs that they know um, previous students have enjoyed and got a lot out of as well um, emailing a GP practice um, it's worth mentioning as well that some of them uh, don't like taking people that are already members of that GP practice so um because a bit of confidentiality you might know people there and you know you might be dealing with doctors that might see you so you know try emailing around um other places as well and we've also got a, a template for you that a medical projects have done that uh, you can use to send to these GP practices it just as a nice polite way of you know formatting your emails yeah, I've got a link and I can just kind of drop that in the chat if you want. Um, uh, so let me just, two seconds. So it's the email template, isn't it? Yeah, that's the one. I'll put that in the chat. Um, just make sure that you kind of copy and paste that because obviously once we close the Zoom down, you'll lose that link. So copy and paste that, save it somewhere. And it's just a, it's just a template email um that you can kind of fill in with your own information you can obviously change it and tweak it a little bit but at least it gives you a starting point to send an email to a gp practice or to the kind of a local hospital or a nursing home whoever you want to send it to that's a really good kind of starting point so that's an actual practical bit of advice um rather than just being like oh go and get it <laughs> yeah um, definitely have a look at a template and yeah, try and get those emails sent um, so as well, it um, doesn't have to be just doctors that you're shadowing. Um, you can also, as I said before, gain a great insight into healthcare if you're shadowing a nurse, um, physios, occupational therapists. You know, there's loads of different roles that go into um, making up uh, the team on the ward. Um, and they all have their, you know, different places, different roles. Um, and so, um, and it's a great thing to talk about in interviews. They often ask, you know, why, why medicine? Why not? Why not nursing? And, you know, if you've shot in a nurse, you know that difference between, you know, what a doctor does and what a nurse does. And this is why I want to be a doctor. And this is why, but nursing is a great profession, but this is why I don't want to do it. Um, preparing a CV is always useful, um, especially if, you um, you know you're doing these shadowing programs they want to know that you're a sensible person that's um sort of going to commit to um coming in stuff um so just have one ready to go especially as i talk about later on if you're looking for volunteer opportunities as well and you know it's just useful having it like you'll get to midway through medical school you're like oh a job, weekend job and you don't have one ready so you know it's always handy having one you know keeping one going as you go along um and yeah as i said using the template and there's the the call template as well um i don't know if you've added that one Mark, yeah well. i've got a link for that as well so i'll put that in the chat as well so there's, there's two different links there that's the the kind of the call like a call script um even like i hate ringing people up and asking for things so having to do that when you're kind of you know 16 17 mm. 18 and you're having to ring up a hospital or a gp practice it's just so much easier to have something to kind of follow or kind of work to um i would have found that really useful years ago so hopefully hopefully some of the students will find that pretty useful um but again feel free to adapt it that's just there as a template change it if you if you want use it if you want use no, don't use it if, if, if you also don't want to so it's there if you need it yeah definitely um 
And so, yeah, as I mentioned, there's a voluntary and paid work as well, which are you know, just as valuable. So, um, and I also think they're really good for demonstrating long-term commitment as well. I mean, I, uh, for my work experience, I worked at a hospice, um, well, volunteered at a hospice um, for like two years. And I think it was really good in demonstrating that, like, I really want to do medicine. I've stuck with this one thing for um, a couple of years now um and showed that you know i'm happy to stick with it i really want to do this so you know doing the same thing having a volunteer role and sticking with it for a long time can really show that commitment um so what you can do um is visit your local nhs website um and they'll have the volunteer roles on there and sometimes they have the volunteer roles on nhs jobs as well uh, so keep a lookout on that um they're mainly paid roles on there for healthcare assistants and nurses and stuff but they do um have volunteer roles pop up on there sometimes as well um the ncvo website so that's the national council for voluntary organizations i think i always get that wrong um but they have uh, a lot of information on there about the different you know types of roles that you can get involved with um, and then volunteeringmatters.org.uk they actually have sort of applications for these um, roles and it's great to just have a look through um, some of them you don't have to commit for, for ages as well um, and some of them don't even have to be in person either there's lots of roles where um, there's like befrienders where you know you can ring someone maybe that's you know doesn't have any friends or family that's you know living in a care home and you're their buddy and you know maybe give them a little company at the at the weekend so there's lots of different things so you don't have to be you know traveling about and committing you know hours of your time it can just be you know calling um an elderly person once a week um which you know you can get so much from and then the person can also benefit from loads as well so um it's a great role to have um and then paid work as well is always great um so like working in pharmacy at weekend or care home healthcare assistant i'd say just mind out if you're maybe in year 11 about you know what sort of ages they accept and um, some might you might have to be over 16 and then some might even have to be over 18 so if you're on a gap year it's definitely may, maybe worth looking at um but just be wary if you're um sort of in sixth form and maybe not quite 18 or if you're in gcc is not quite 16 um but you know just go in drop off your cv um that always tends to work and as i said like having a cv is always great and really important and um, just having a copy on you um or you know ready to email whenever it's needed can i just ask you i know you mentioned about some of the the kind of work experience you had um so in in total what work experience did you have like when you applied so yeah so i i had the two years volunteering at the hospice and then i had um a day shadowing um in an ophthalmology um sort of clinic so i didn't have that much actual you know proper proper shadowing i think it was that you know long-term commitment in a caring role that's what got it for me and then i was able to reflect on it pretty well my personal statement uh, so i'll go through that later as well mm. so i think as long as you can reflect on it show you've been caring worked in a team i think you know you can get away with a lot of things that aren't necessarily just what you think of as normal work experience yeah i know we're going to talk about reflection in a little bit and for a lot of people this is the first webinar they've watched with us it might be their first kind of interaction with us but they're going to learn pretty quickly that we talk about reflection a lot like it's, it's so so important so while we're talking about work experience you don't need tons and tons of work experience it's it's about what you do with it and how you reflect on it and how you communicate it at the times when you need it you know it's a little bit like playing playing the game and maximizing and talking about the things that you've seen or people you've spoken to um, but we'll we'll kind of get to that so it's not all about volume yeah definitely. Um, it's 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 being smart enough to use it in the right way yeah that reflection is the most it's the key isn't it yeah it just it is the key it's not about getting tons of things yeah. it's being able to spin it in the right way that they that they want to to hear it definitely definitely so i mean even with this last point here like you can be working in catering or retail and if you can reflect on it and relate it to medicine so you know i worked in a team um doctors work in a team this is what i learned about working in a team um then 
you know that can be of great use on your personal statement and in interviews so it's just what you make of it and you know when you're at your work experience just make the most of it that you you're not just sat there in a corner in silence like you're learning from it and asking questions that you can you know take stuff away from and, and reflect on so here's some free online work experience um so you know COVID is still very much a, a thing um, so it might still be a little bit hard to to get in person stuff. So, you know, if you are struggling, this is you know available as well. I definitely would say still try and get in person um, stuff if you can, or even if you're you know in a clinic that's on Zoom, um, that's great. But yeah, these are also an option. So Brighton Sussex Medical School have virtual work experience. Uh, there's a lot of description that I've just copied from the website and the link there. Um, and we're handing out the slides afterwards, so I'm sure you guys can, you know, type it up from that. Um, but yeah, it's just a good way of looking into um, the role of a doctor and, you know, the other healthcare professionals. Again, it's that getting that insight so that you can talk about it in interview as well. And then observe GP. Um, and it's just sort of, you know, um, looking at a patient's journey through the GP and who they interact with um, and how it all sort of works together um, in terms of caring for patients. So that's another helpful one as well. So, you know, definitely have a look at those. I say um, still aim for, you know, ringing up and trying to get some, you know, shadowing or a volunteer role. But, you know, these are options as well. So I'll hand over to you, Mark. Yeah, I was just going to ask before we kind of talk about, you know, the, the courses and things that we do, um, I was just going to ask how many times did, how many places did you apply to and how many kind of rejections did you get? Because obviously, the, you know, these you, the guys watching might think, oh, I need to apply to lots of places. Did you apply um, to loads and get any rejections? So I um, got into the hospice um fine i had an interview process though for that but in terms of like uh, having a volunteer role in the nhs that was a little bit more difficult but that was i think because that was my own fault that was quite a lot of hours so i think it's just finding what works for you because i mean i was doing a lot of sport i just didn't want to commit that much so i think um it's not that hard to get but it's just finding one that sort of fits with you know what you want to do because i mean six pounds a busy time so um yeah and I had contacts luckily for trying to get shadowing mm. yeah it's, it's good if you've got contacts and a lot of people don't necessarily have those yeah. kind of contacts um and as we know COVID is still a thing and yeah, exactly. getting that kind of that old school NHS you know GP work experience is super difficult at the moment mm -hmm. um but like hopefully that's where we can help like that's where we have yeah. like the, the gp live course or like the ward round live course um normally i'd probably like go and talk about one of these courses specifically um but everybody watching tonight is relatively new to, to to us um so what i might do i might just kind of drop the the actual website url in um and just kind of go through some of the free resources as well as some of our kind of course things um i don't know if i can i share my screen um, oh yeah i'll stop sharing mine um do, 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 do. i just want to make sure that like everybody yeah. you know if, if this is kind of the first interaction with with kind of us that i can kind of point the students towards some of the free stuff as well as the courses that we run um so we've literally got this thing at the top of the website that says free support. Most of you might have found the webinars one already, given that the fact that you're already here. And um, we've also got the like essentially blogs and articles all written by medical students in here as well. Um, so if it's anything to do with work experience or interviews or UCAT when that kind of comes around, um, like we have articles on on everything. Um, so that's a really good thing. For, for you as, as students over the next kind of 18 months um we've got past webinars as well i know this is a lot of you your first one but we've got ones from you know the, the past few months so if there's anything you want to catch up on or you want to kind of try and get ahead with you know the application process and that's a good place and then we've got our kind of youtube channel as well where olivia makes videos about kind of life at medical school and things as well um so there's loads and loads of free things there 
Um, we do have our kind of ward round live and GP live courses. So, you know, when you get to that stage and if you're having problems finding the work experience through the kind of the free ways that we've kind of spoken about already, then, you know, that might be an option for you as well. Um, and essentially we, we have our own hospital ward and we have our own GP surgery um, and students can kind of talk to patients and, you um, we have a doctor who kind of teaches you how to take patient histories and um, you kind of diagnose cases and things like directly with doctors and, and with patients. Um, but check all the free stuff out before you kind of have a look at any of this stuff. Um, it's just there if you need it or if you're really struggling. Um, and definitely check all the, the other kind of free resources that we have there as well, because there's, there's going to be a lot that you can use, of, you know, during your application kind of process anyway. So hopefully that's just a, an overview of you know what's there and support that's there for you as and when you need it um and hopefully you know you'll find that pretty useful over the next 18 months anyway cool that's my only like overview bit done um, yeah and on to the big bit the most the important, important slide bit. of tonight if you take anything away from this webinar it's that diagram there from the gmc um, and you'll see a lot of that in first year medical school as well. So like, what happened? So what? How did you feel about it? And now what are you going to do about it? Um, it's just it's a never ending cycle of, um, reflecting. So um, and you'll do it, you know, on your personal statement, you do an interview and you'll do it throughout medical st school and throughout, you know, your career as a doctor. Um, and so like in terms of how this relates to work experience i'd say you know try and take a little notebook with you um and jot down things that have happened or things that you know you think are quite interesting to write about um it's just easy to get your thoughts down you know there and then rather than you know a few weeks later having to think about what happened and oh i can't remember it properly just get everything down and then when you get home you know that night maybe write up oh, how, how did it make you feel um, and what, how is that going to change what you do for next time um, and you've got a template for it as well medical projects um, don't know if there's a link for that as well yeah I've got um, I've got like one of the blog articles um, I can share my screen and show you where it is and give oh, everybody yeah. the, the link for that as well um, because yeah we talk about reflection on literally every webinar that we do like it's that it's that important yeah. um and we have articles on it we have entire webinars literally just on reflection um so and there's a reflection template in here so if you're starting to get work experience now or you already have kind of a, a part-time job or a volunteering thing and you're not yet using like a reflection notebook or a journal or something then you definitely need to start using it now anyway um and then there's an empty kind of pdf version of this sheet so you can kind of fill it in as you're doing it and then when it comes to writing personal statements which seems miles away you'll have loads of examples in there that you can use so i'm going to put this link in the chat as well so you've got something else that's super productive you can use from from tonight yeah definitely right um to be honest, I don't really I suppose I don't really just share my screen, but I'll just put that diagram back up so everyone's got it. Um yeah, I it just learn to do it well as well. Like if you if you do it now and you learn to get in the habit of it and get used to writing in that way, then once it gets around to interviews, you'll be absolutely ready to smash them because you, that's what they want. Like they just want to know that you can reflect properly um and it's yeah. just a proper skill to have with you throughout throughout your career yeah i'm sure like everybody when they joined this webinar was thinking all right i'm going to join it to learn how to get work experience but secretly like this is the most important mm -hmm. part getting the work experience seems like the biggest challenge for you right now but reflecting on the th things that you get is the is the really important part mm. you know we can give you the emails and the call scripts and things to to go and get work experience and as long as you're tenacious enough and you, you don't give up you will find work experience and you'll get enough mm -hmm. but if you don't do this reflection part you're going to really struggle communicating what you've learned yeah. and that's what the universities are really kind of looking for um so Definitely. yeah it's what you make have a look at that link 
learn this reflection circle, this this wheel, um, because you're going to need it over the next eighteen months. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. Right, I think that's it. So many questions. Yeah, I've got a lot. <laughs> but hopefully, that's kind of some actual practical mm. tools and some practical kind of rather than just saying go and get work experience hopefully the email template the call template yeah. the reflection guide um will actually help you make a bit of a start with things um so you know use those try and get on it as quickly as possible um and that'll really help your your kind of application process um yeah so we're going to use the the kind of the q a tool um you can ask us anything ask mini anything um, we'll try and get through the most popular questions we'll try and keep it all around work experience as well so if you want to use the q a tool don't put it in the chat because we won't look at it if it's in the chat we're only using the q a tool um, and we'll try and get through as many as possible in the next kind of like 20 minutes ish we'll see how we get on here we'll try and be quick so the first one is um what's something that all medical school interviewers want to be able to see in the person applying to medical school um, so I think, like I said at the start, I think they want to know that you've got that understanding of what a doctor actually does um, and that you can, you know, reflect that it's not always, you know, the best job in the world. There are hard, you know, moments that your people are going to be really sick, people are going to be dying, you're going to have to deal with some really horrible things. Um, and I think just having that understanding and be able to get that across uh adding your personal statement interview is pretty important and those things like teamwork as well are really good to demonstrate whether that's you know are you in a maybe a society i don't know what i can't remember what they're even called in six form like a uh, or a sports team um can you show that you work well with others because that's another really important part of you know being a doctor and working within healthcare is can you work with others so yeah, I think the um, there's probably quite a few things that they're looking for. Mm. That's why they have interviews and that's why they have yeah. multiple kind of stations or a lot of them have MMIs and they have different stations because they're looking for lots of different things. So, yes, they're looking for teamwork. They're also looking for communication. They want to make sure you have a realistic view of, of what the job is going to entail. They're just checking to see that you're mature enough now mm. to, to kind of get in as well. So there's lots of things they're going to be looking for, um, but you'll have lots of those naturally. And it's just about communicating it and putting it in front of mm-hmm. them when it comes to the interview. But we'll do, yeah. we'll do more webinars on um, kind of interviews slightly later on in the year. And if, if a lot of you are kind of year, year 12, it's going to be another year and a bit before you kind of need to start prepping for, for interviews. So um, yeah, you've got plenty of time to, to get ready for those. Plenty of time. Um, the second question here is it's to do with the UCAT, so I'm just kind of going to skip over that. Um, we've got a while for most people to, to be doing the UCAT. If you're year 13, yeah. you've already done it. You've already mm. got your results. If you're year 12, you've got 10, 11 months, whatever it Ages. is, before you need to start prepping for that. worry about it for a while. Not yet. yet. Not yet. Um, um, how hard is it to get into Oxbridge for medicine? Mm. Pretty tough. I mean, I, I didn't apply to Oxbridge, so I do not have any sort of um, experience with it. But I think you've just got to be aware that the interview process is probably going to be very tough. And um, I think, do they take the BMAT as well? Is it both? Do both of them do BMAT? Yeah, it's very different for them. BMAT's for those. So um, I think the average for medicine entry into oxbridge is between 15 and 20 percent um, of applicants um we've got an article on the website actually which ranks them all by how hard they are to get into uh, i'll see if i can find that but um eat, just treat them all the same yeah, don't kind of don't try say. and take oxford and cambridge completely separately you've got to mm-hmm. prepare in the same way um, apart from maybe the interview stages which where they have quite specific interviews yeah. if you're applying there but the rest of your prep has got to be kind of similar so don't try and don't try and do anything different just focus on what you need to do now 
rather than thinking about the mm. interviews and um, the BMATs because that's kind of a little bit down the line. Yeah, you've got to apply to your strengths as well. So don't have a you know preconceived view of why you know where's the perfect university for you. You've got to apply to where your strengths are. If you UCAT scores good or your personal statement, like you've just got to optimize your chances to get in wherever really. Um, yeah, um, Ed, and I know that you probably heard this, but it's it's really really true getting a medical degree from anywhere is worth exactly the same. Yeah. So if you can apply to a different university because they have slightly lower entry grades and your grades fit that, then apply there. Don't waste, don't waste an application on somewhere where the grades are too high or the GCSE requirements are too difficult or you know they put a lot of emphasis on the personal statement and that's not your strongest bit. Just don't apply there. Mm-hmm. Apply somewhere that fits your strengths. So don't kind of have Oxbridge or have a specific university in mind yet. Mm -hmm. Um, You need to find the ones that fit you and fit your strengths rather than picking a name, work out what you're good at and then match it with the university that fit you. Don't kind of go in with this idea of like, I'm only applying to Kings. I'm only applying to Mm -hmm. UCL or things like that. Um, Because it's, it's, it's a mistake that a lot of students make. You want to go to the, the high flying names, but at the end of the day, you need to maximise your chances of getting into medical school. That's yeah. that's the game. Exactly. Um, another work experience question. I feel like we got really intense then. That was like... Really I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't want it to be like that. <laughs> um, what's the most important thing to get out of work experience? Um, hmm. um, I suppose... I sound so I don't want to repeat myself but anything that you can reflect on you think is good to reflect on then that's that like if you've seen a really great interaction between maybe a doctor and a patient and you know um you've said this was done really well and um this is maybe a quality that I can demonstrate you know when I did this uh, then that's great I think just jot everything down and anything that you can write about um it's great and just keep asking questions as well like when you're there like get out of it what you want like do you want to know what the day-to-day job is like just keep asking questions um and as long as you can reflect on it then yeah definitely um if i can't get work experience in a hospital or the medical field where else should i look we mentioned a couple of them slightly earlier in the slides is there anything else that you kind of recommend that's not kind of a direct hospital placements yeah so anything like anything that's sort of public facing anything that's kind of a caring role so uh, care homes are a great option even the pharmacies as well um it was a weekend job you know you're you're seeing patients come in that have come in from maybe been sent from the hospital and you're chatting to them um and that's great to reflect on as well. Like what's their experience, you know, after maybe having treatment and what's their experience on medications, things like that. Um, hospice as well. I had a great time uh, volunteering at hospice. So, um, I used to just serve drinks on a Saturday afternoon and you get to meet all the patient families and, and, you know, chat to the patients. I didn't, you know, I didn't do anything super useful or any sort of, actual jobs but I you know just serve them a drink and had a nice chat and made them smile and you know um there's you know loads of things you can do that's not hospital related and even if you know maybe you've got a Saturday job at a shop then you know if you can reflect on it then then that's all good what about volunteering with kind of a local sports club I know that a lot of students or it's quite an easy kind of thing to get if, if you play football already or you play a sport you know if you can help out and help the juniors who like help the under fives or like the under eights or under twelves or something then that's quite an easy thing to do it's outside so it's less covid restrictions with a lot of things yeah. um that might be another thing for for people to look at yeah definitely um and it's it's quite accessible at the mm. moment i think way talking to people and public face and i think be really really good um, it's similar again, how can you find any hospital placements if you're under 18? Um, well, there's going to be lots and lots of restrictions. 
So yes, you might struggle to get a volunteer place if you're under 18 or um, a job if you're under 18 at a lot of these care facilities. Um, some of the hospitals do have specific work experience placements for people who are under 18 and they'll give you a week or two weeks um, on certain wards. So look out for those. You know, we, we, can't, we can't lie, it's difficult to find these. It is hard work. Um, but once those kind of avenues are exhausted and you can't get into a hospital, then go and have a look for a GP place, you know, use that email. If you can't do that, you know, try the hospices. If you can't do that, try different care homes. Um, you just got to keep working through. If you can't get the hospital one, just keep going with others. You will find something. Yeah. Um, question about the UCAT test. Um, the UCAT is essentially a test that you have to take next year if you're in year 12 um, and it basically just gives you a score and the universities use it to rank you and um, offer interviews and things. We'll do separate webinars on the UCAT later. Um, what A-levels do I need to become a doctor? Um, so I'd say, you know, I don't know if they've, they've changed it because chemistry used to be compulsory for pretty much all of them, but I think they've changed it for a few of them now. So I'd say, you know, chemistry and biology are always pretty, pretty handy. And I think some of them want you to have two sciences and then you've got a bit of a choice with the other subject. Um, so what I'd say is just make sure you just check the university websites. Um, if you're sure you want to apply for medicine, then, but, you know, chemistry and biology are always a great shout if you're wanting to apply. And the next question is, what subjects should I pick to become a surgeon? You've got to go through the same path. Same route, so it's the yeah. same subjects. You become a doctor before you specialise down the surgeon route. Um, mm. So you get the same degree before you go down the surgical route. Yeah. Um, doo -doo -doo. Can you become a doctor or do medicine if you didn't have the best GCSEs? Yeah, so um, as I was saying before, it's about applying to your strengths. So some of them require you to have you know however many a stars or reward you points how many a stars you have but some of them say you know you just need a a in english and a in maths maybe um and then that's it and they'll just look at your a levels or your ucat score bmat score um so as i said before just have a look at all the university websites and what their requirements are and you know if you meet you know some of the the GCSE requirements from like some of the schools that don't require that much, then you know go for it and pick those A levels, um, and and have a go because you know you might be really great interview, you might have a really great personal statement, so don't let it put you off if you haven't got the strongest GCSEs. Um, next question here is we've probably got time for maybe two or three more questions. I'm just conscious I don't want to take up um, yeah. too much of everybody's evening, so I'll, I'll try and find a couple more. Um, how long should you generally do volunteering for? Um, I think they want to see that you've committed to it for at least a while. They don't want to think, you know, you've just done it for the sake of having it on your personal statement. Um, for, you know, just to name it. Um, so I think, you know, at least doing um, a couple of months, if not more, would be would be useful but obviously uh, people's circumstances are different and um but i think they do want to see that commitment from you know volunteering role and obviously the volunteering organization probably wants to um keep you around longer than you know a week or so um but i mean as i said like i did two years i don't think you know that's absolutely necessary for you to do that long um but you know com commit for as long as you can really um, for the last two questions, I'm going to scroll down just to try and find some of like, the more recent questions. Um, let's have a look. Um, oh, people are typing questions, so keep moving now. Da -da -da. When should I start looking for work experience? Solid question. Easy answer. Now. Now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, as well, like, sixth form gets busy, so if you get it done now and out the way then you've got time to concentrate on your exams and you cut down the line um so yeah and especially 
you know with covid it might be difficult to get so i think just giving yourself that window to find somewhere and you know get a whole work experience i think just go for it get applying now yeah definitely um there's quite a few questions in here about um pharmacy as work experience is is that um a good place to to get some work experience yeah i definitely think so i mean i was looking at the websites today uh, the university websites and they all said you know pharmacy is a good way you're, you're speaking to patients um you know you're working in a healthcare environment and you're working i mean pharmacists also work on the wards with doctors they work within the multidisciplinary team um so you know getting to know their role as well is is really important and something that you can reflect on as well so yeah i think pharmacy working in pharmacy uh, um, is a great bit of work experience to have. And then final question, um, kind of for you about your work experience. What, what did you feel you gained the most from your time um, kind of working in the, the, the care home and the, the hospice? Um, I think um, it was great learning about patient experiences and what sort of made them feel comfortable and happy, especially in a, an environment like hospice, you know, where you're, you know, everyone's pretty much at these then stages of life. Um, what kind of what you can do as a doctor, or you know, for me as a volunteer, to make them as comfortable as possible. So, you know, um, um, having family in, and you know, treating them as a whole person rather than just a set of symptoms, things like that. Um, found really, you know, great and really opened my eyes to what medicine is about. It's not just, you know you're not just treating the disease, you're treating the whole person as well and looking after them. So that was yeah, what I got from that. Cool. Um, yeah, hopefully some students can find similar work experience. Um, and hopefully that some of the things that were provided will will help you guys with, you know, getting that work experience and some actual practical tools rather than just being like, go and get work experience. Um, mm -hmm. So you've got some tools now. You know where all our kind of free resources are on the website as well. Um, you know where our courses are if you need them. Um, we'll be doing more webinars in the future as well. So check your emails for them. I'm sure we'll probably drop everyone an email as soon as we're doing them. Um, but that's it kind of it for, for tonight. Um, 10 to 8, 50 minutes, short and sweet. Um, hope everybody's kind of enjoyed this. Hope you found it useful. Um, Thanks a lot, Minnie, as well, for, for coming back. Um, hopefully you. be back on more webinars with us, with us yeah, soon. Yeah. For sure. Thank you. Cool. Right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you again. See Bye. you later.